So I figured what I'd do is um, after class uh, today, um, I figured I would just record a little, just kind of quick video um, recapping how we utilize Excel, okay, for some of these net present value, uh, time value of money calculations that we were running through during our application today. So I'm just go ahead and share my screen real quick. And we'll get into just kind of uh, just a quick example of how we go about using Excel. Okay. All right. So again, like the whole point here is, you know, you guys can look through the text and you can use those tables in the front if you want to, you know, but the question becomes like, where do those numbers come from and what do they mean? So, <clears throat> You know, we got into the whole future value conversation and we said that the future value is equal to, let's make this a little bit bigger. Oh, sorry, doing this on the fly here. Okay. So we said that the future value um, is equal to, right, the present value times one plus our rate, okay? And then it was raised to the exponent, okay, raised to the exponent of the number of periods, okay? And we said number of periods instead of time or instead of years, because we can adjust the number of periods depending upon the type of compounding that we get uh, involved in, right? So when we take this formula, Okay, and we rearrange it into the present value, right? Like we did towards the tail end of class. We came up with the fact that the present value is now equal to the future value times this thing we call the discount factor, right? Which was one divided by one plus the rate raised to the NPER, okay? All right, and we said that that last little factor, the one divided by one plus rate raised to the NPER, the, the time period, we call that the discount factor. And that's essentially what those numbers are, right, within, uh, within the text, those big tables. If you're looking at a present value table and you're given a future value, then you just find the time period and find the interest rate and it gives you a decimal number and that decimal number is what we call the discount factor in the finance world okay so we were just running through a few different examples during our application time today right and we said that there are essentially five different variables within the time value of money calculations that we care about right and you can see the slide you know here to the left hand side of the screen and you've got Excel to the right hand side. So we have future value, we have present value, we have rate, we have the number of compounding periods, and we have the payment. So if we're dealing with an annuity, right, a series of deposits, a consistent series of deposits of the same amount of money or withdrawals as the case may be, um, then we're going to, we know we're going to have the variable. PMT or payment involved somewhere in the calculation. And we said that because Excel is so awesome, once we type the equal sign, Excel knows, okay, now we're going to be getting into a formulaic computation, okay? And we have thousands of formulas at our disposal and future value happens to be one of them, right? So we said equals FV. All right, so that activates the future value computation within Excel. And then to figure out what variables Excel is going to ask us for, we simply open the parentheses. And when we do that, you can see Excel tells us exactly the variables that we need and which place within the computation they need to exist. Okay, so in this case, it's saying, tell me the rate. So we would select the rate. Okay, tell me the number of periods. We tell it the number of periods. Tell me the PMT. Well, in the event that we don't have any sort of series of deposits and we're only dealing with lump sums, then we don't have to enter anything. Okay, so we can just comma past the PMT. Okay, and now it says, tell me what the present value is. All right, and so 
now we know we've got a present value. Okay, we're not going to deal with the type at all during this class. So once you've put in the final variable, either present value or future value, depending upon the computation, all you have to do is simply close down the parentheses. Okay, so what's this going to tell us? Well, right now we don't really have any numbers in, but in the end, what it's going to tell us is, okay, the future value of a present value investment invested at a given rate for a certain period of time is going to be X, okay? So if we have the present value of a $1,000 investment, okay, and it earns 5% per year, and we keep it invested for 10 years, then, oh, what happened? Okay, remember, we got to think about cash flows. So the present value, right, that's in today's dollars. That's cash that's going out of our pocket, okay? And the future value is what we get back from that investment when we pull that investment out of the market. So we have to adjust the present value in our formula to account for how Excel views cash flows, and we make the present value negative. And when we do that, now Excel says, okay, the future value is positive because you have positive cash flow coming back into your life from that initial $1,000 investment, okay? Over 10 years at 5%. And we also said, hey, we could adjust this for monthly compounding if we want to, because right now it's 5% per year, right? And 10 years. So if we said, let's go monthly compounding instead of annual compounding, we can actually just adjust that right within the formula. Okay, so we can take the rate, okay? And we know that's per year, so we needed to get it into a per month basis, right? So we divide by 12. And we take the number of periods, which was 10 years, right? At 12 months per year, so we have to multiply by 12, okay? We still don't have a payment, no annuity. And we're still at the $1,000 initial investment. So everything else pretty much stays the same. So now on a compounded basis, on a monthly compounded basis, we have a future value of $1,647.01. .01. Okay, so we can either use Excel, okay, to convert the annual rate into a monthly rate or the years into the total number of months. We can do it this way so we can actually see what those numbers are and then we can use those within the computation. Or if you're comfortable with Excel and you're comfortable that you're doing it properly, then you can simply adjust the rate and the number of periods right there within the formula itself, okay? So I hope this has been a little helpful, kind of uh, clearing up a little bit of the, the nuances of Excel. So remember when we're talking present value and future value, we treat present values as kind of cash going out the door within the formula itself, okay? Because Excel sees that as we're making an investment, we are taking cash out of our life. And then at some point in time in the future, we're getting that money back and therefore it sees the cash as a positive number coming back in. Okay, so lump sum using the payment only when the uh, verbiage of the problem indicates something along the lines of you're making a series of deposits. What monthly payment are you going to have to make? How much can you withdraw on a monthly basis? Those are all kind of keywords for the fact that you're going to have some component within the formula that ties back to the PMT, the payment, okay? A series of consistent monthly, weekly, daily, whatever it is, payments within the problem, okay? If anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out and um, I'll see you guys in class on Tuesday. Good luck on your quiz.